Um, hello, hello. Hello, I hope the stream starts. Uh, um, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, um, Alexis here. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out a good introduction, you know, like a good hello, basically. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, like the stream is a little bit spontaneous, but it's also about some of the plans that I'm intending to uh, for implement on this channel. Uh, for, and as discussed, you know, like it largely. Uh, sorry, a disruption. Uh, fine. As discussed, it would be largely about the production. Uh, I have also figured out some of the issues related to camera uh, for, and uh, for the, the, the sound, you know, like, and I have ordered a new camera and microphone and they would be arriving next week. So setup would be better and quality would be better as well. Um, but uh, you know, with an introduction, I mean, like I'm, I'm. Uh, it's a very pragmatic subject today. You know, like uh, for, uh, I had a couple of conversations with some of the people who are watching this channel, and uh, for some of the questions have been arriving last week. Uh, for, and I have decided to create this series of streams, uh, which would be related to uh, for production, uh, different stages of assembling the studio and the project and talk about it in a little bit of detail on every of the stages, you know, like, and making this relevant, uh, not for a large scale studio, but basically on how you bootstrap your studio from the start, you know, like in a fairly complex presumed conditions into an actual game development business entity, you know, like developing the game that you would want to develop and put it into the market in the most efficient way. And for that, I came up with a plan of uh, the whole idea and the concept of this uh, uh, series of streams, you know, like as well is making it again, highly practical, uh, minimize any amount of redundant bullshit information uh, and making sure, you know, like that uh, it's highly applicable to the scenario that you might have, you know, like in a context of the current industry. And uh, for, without further ado, you know, like here's here's the the the, the plan, you know, like and uh, for, we we will see a lot of Excel, you know, like I think you know, like in what we're doing uh, together with uh, a bit of another software, you know, like which I would use to produce together with you on the streams, you know, like those materials uh, for making up an example uh, for, of uh, how you can make a good concept and how you can make a good uh, for inventory and uh, the section of the features to the smaller features and actual tasks or, you know, like how do you make a good script for a vertical slice and how do you do assemble it to for, um, to actual tasks and plan the roadmap and then build the budget and stuff like that so uh stage one you know like which i would like to record and stream next week is essentially about how you indie kick off the project development at this point it sounds like something that might be apparent for a lot of people. It is not for numerous reasons. Uh, a lot of people for the last 10 years consider only possible way to go into the game development with early investments, which is not true. You know, like my opinion is that investments are the scale tool, you know, like in general, and you need to build something and to prepare something to show before you take any money from the market. So we will discuss like how you start, you know, like initial team compositions because they're different. There are different circumstances people meet together and uh, uh, different types of people meet together. And trust me or not, there is a large difference, you know, like in between compositions where let's say uh, uh, an engineer from the big company and the art director from indie community meets and starts something or uh, for example, in a scenario that a producer lives a, a mid-sized business, you know, like and makes this thing his hobby and looking for a couple of people to help building something for him, you know, of course for her, you know, like and we want to talk a little bit about that because these things are extremely important to define 
goal orientation of what you would be building uh, f uh, and how the core and the culture of your company is forming, you know, like at this initial stages. Um, defining the game, also uh, something that people don't typically do because like the situation that happens 99% of time is someone who already has built a concept or a small prototype and definitions and the goal of building this game, you know, like some, some somehow gets omitted. Uh, for, so we really want to touch on this subject, you know, like on the first talk. And I want to talk about the prototyping in general. Uh, for the reason to talk about the prototyping, and I think that this is one of the most important elements, you know, like of the first talk, is that a lot of people are confusing the concept of prototyping with actual development, with vertical slice building, and think about it as something which is a one-time thing, you know, like uh, or some other people think that this is an ongoing thing, but prototyping is a very tricky animal, you know, like, and you want to treat it differently at different stage uh, stages of development of uh, a group of people uh, and, um, uh, in general, a development process. Second stage is about getting all of the elements that you have and actually starting to put it into something that would allow you to build a roadmap. And reality is, is that you don't want to start anything without you build a roadmap. And to do that, you need components, right? You know, like, and those components are actual concept of the game, uh, uh, stage definitions, uh, how you build it and what stages, what happens when, what is more important, what's less important, you know, like how the stages operate. Uh, you also, when you have stages, you're able to start thinking about the timeline initially. Timeline is extremely important, I'll explain why. You can start building inventory of the assets and features of your project. And once you have all of those things, you can actually decompose it to actual tasks and the forecasts, and you can build it into the roadmap corresponding to the stages definition. Once you have roadmap for the stages definition, you can build the timeline. Now, the timeline is something that people take very easily, you know, like, and it's not to be done this way, you know, like, because timeline will help you to define the time load. It will help you to avoid a whole number of pitfalls, uh, for including, like, time load disposition of resources, for example. It will help you to sell, sell, save a lot of money in the resources. I mean, like, so timeline is very important, such as the pipeline. And the pipeline and the, and the roadmap is something that people are actually uh, mixing together into something they think is a one thing, you know, like, and uh, this is not true as well. Like pipeline, uh, by the definition, is a, a number of instructions and options in a different order, you know, like that has to be done to uh, perform on different and specific type of the tasks of uh, being connected together into something that produces the final result. You know, like, well, the roadmap, you know, like can include some of the stages which are not relevant to the technical pipeline. So we will need to talk about this a little bit. Quantifying efforts, an extremely important element. You would need to quantify, you, first of all, before quantifying efforts, you need to understand what's actually quantifiable and what's not. Because, like, there are things which are not quantifiable. There are R&D processes, there are things related to community, there are ongoing things, there are stuff related to overheads. And then there are quantifiable efforts that should be in a corner of your thinking, you know, like, that you need to quantify and put into the actual development, right? You know, like, and uh, for, we'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, once you have all of these things enumerated before, uh, for, you can actually start thinking about optimal use of resources uh, that you have available. Uh, and how do you approach and tackle these tasks uh, for realistically, you know, like with what you have and with what you want to achieve? Uh, for, uh, it's a process. It takes a large part of the pre-production and the pre-pre-production packaging. And once you get through this procedure and more prototyping, you actually would be able to make a time load and the budget, you know, like in the budget is something that has been treated by people as something you give to investors or show as expenses to someone uh, f uh, and and you use it as a tool to procure resources. Well, I think we all need to get back to the point where we treat budget uh, as a core part of your initiative, you know, like that actually you're told, 
you know, like you are yours by yours. I mean, the team and the head of the team and the people who are starting this whole thing, uh, because it, it, it really helps you with the common sense. It really helps you to keep the things real, you know, like and in general with all of the reality checks, right? You know, like that you might uh, get across in the process. Uh, Pre-production packaging uh, for, uh, is assembling all of these materials together. Uh, for some people also uh, for prefer to have a, a master prototype, which can be again different from the vertical slice. It can include 10, 15 prototypes of the key features, like some of the prototyping, all of those documents, uh, the actual roadmap, the plan of action, what people appear at what part of the actual process and they should appear when they're necessary not because they're your friends and then you wanted to involve them earlier you know like and how to effectively you know like separate stages and what happens at each of the stages is also a very important element to it because if you do not set in stone in the beginning you know like how the and when actual changes happens, when some things go to the backlog or when some processes are initiated, you can be uh, pretty much down on the road to the development hell and multi-year development, which you would potentially want to avoid. Um, vertical slice production. Uh, for a painful subject, I think I'm talking about the vertical slices for the most of my career, trying to explain to a lot of people what it is, why it should be produced, I will give again the classic definition, you know, like vertical slice is effectively 80% of quality into 5 to 10% of content. Think about it, about the one finished mission, you know, like which contains most of the core features. They might be produced from the shits and sticks, you know, like it might be not the final version, but they need to give everyone who would play the vertical slice a full understanding what's the fun and touch and feel and ccc and all the key elements of the game in what final graphic quality you want to achieve again vertical slice in a lot of senses uh is a best tool you can have to work with someone externally from your organization because the biggest question everyone have to the any form of the entertainment content is that if you can produce the product in a final quality uh, it's like when you produce something which is like three hours of a 40% content, you know, like there is literally no guarantee your team is capable or you have capability to get it to 80, 90, 100%, you know, it just doesn't work this way. So if you have this proof, your conversation with any uh, financial partner or a publisher or the community, you know, like turns into here's a 10% of you what we will get in the end, you know, like plus some extras. And we'll just multiply it like 10, 15, 20 times, you know, like 10 times. And that would be pretty much what we're looking at. This is our vision. But what is important as well, and what's often people don't really realize, is that vertical, li vertical slice is also extremely important for your team that would be growing over time to have the benchmark of what has to be produced on a way and on a process. I mean, like if you have a vertical slice, you can show it at all the interviews. You can show it to all the people who want to join you. You can show it to all the partners. You can actually show it to the community and start early community work. You can get early feedback. And you can keep to something which basically defines what you're trying to achieve, right? You know, like, and this is, a, it's a North Star is an important element in quality. And uh, I would suggest that vertical slice should be a part of every production, though it's not like a lot of companies, you know, to do that. I would say that most of the companies do not produce vertical slice. Of, uh, and they just, just keep on doing things sporadically a lot of good games being done this way you know like but this approach cannot be done a part of the methodology you know like an absence of the vertical slice actually uh, f uh strips you off for the potential opportunities that you might have as a production team and uh, f uh I, I, and your external communication with everyone you can talk to with whatever um, after the vertical slice production, we I want to discuss the go-to-market strategy, actualization of all materials, and pre-linear production scale. Um, go-to-market strategy is important after the vertical slice today because it gets more and more apparent that lots of studios will choose to self-publish, uh, given what's happening into in, into the industry. You know, like a lot of uh, promises got broken. There is no assurance uh, that marketing would be done and can be done technically properly by a lot of partnerships in publishing. A lot of people looking more and more into building community by their own hands. Uh, go to the market strategy defines it, it really 
in a lot of sense, you know, like it's a choice of, uh, but I feel like given times again, it's not a choice anymore because even if you would consider working with someone like a, a publisher or a fund or whoever, you cannot really 100% rely on the communication with the community. And I think that every developer needs to build their community by themselves at this point. Uh, some of the good and best examples of myself working with some of the uh, best companies I've worked with, as I consider, you know, like, uh, namely GC Game World, uh, Epic Games as well. You know, like it's, uh, those are the companies that even if they would have a publisher partner or whatever, they would keep in touch with the community directly. Uh, for, uh, the development of Stalker 1 and the Kazakhs and the Euros of Annihilated Empires. I mean, I'm not sure any one of you remember this one. I worked on it. You know, like it's, it's always been a department of 10 people, you know, like working with community and media and, and PR and we would be constantly in touch and we would be constantly trying to create a positive feedback loop from the community from very early stages. I mean, like, and I think that it's in some sense, you know, like we'll need to go back to that, but we'll, we'll discuss it separately. I mean, like, I think that each of those talks would be about an hour, hour and a half, you know, like, and I would provide you with multiple examples, ideas of the content plan, you know, like of how you can build it nowadays and why community management is actually one of the most complex elements of the current work with games nowadays. It became super complex uh, for, because of the overall social networks environments, different platforms, different means and uses that people uh, are uh, trying to apply to get game to be identified by the audience uh, actualization of all of the materials uh, for, uh, i can give you 100 percent that once the vertical slice is done you would need to go back to your roadmap and timeline and the concept and feature inventory and inventory of the assets and change a lot of stuff like you'd need to change a lot of this documentation and you need to make it actual and moreover you will encounter a very important task you would need to make sure that all of your team is a very wall of this final changes before before you go to the linear production. By default, it's considered that when you start to go to the linear production, you start to get new people, you're getting to the minimal pre-linear scale. And I, once again, I would encourage everyone to keep it minimal because less people, less uh, redundant communication, you do less meetings, you do more work, you know, like pretty apparent. Uh, you also need to uh, make sure that everyone are at the same point in their thought, because like most of the creativity, uh, whatever it sounds, you know, like from the point of view of core features and the integrity of the game you're building, they're like over before the linear production. When linear production starts, it means that you have prepared like rogues in all the Warcraft games, you know, like you did the preparation, right? You know, like, and you spend a lot of efforts and everything is mapped out. 100% your plan would not go as planned, but let's hope it goes as planned for like at least 60, 70% and you need to execute it. And you would need to backlog a lot of new ideas and new features and a lot of major external feedback that goes against the whole integrity of the alpha of the game, you know, like to have, uh, amend them later where you can, or even later at the patches when the game is out. Uh, for alpha is crucial. I mean, like, uh, I would, I would really like to share some experiences from the production I had, you know, like, and I would really like to share some of the experience I had uh, for, in some of the recent conversations, you know, like about how effort scales to vertical production and then to alpha and then to beta, because I think that nowadays, you know, like it might be the case where you try to realize when you try to build vertical slice, maybe uh, uh, trying to get some external resources in. So your technical size of the team, you know, like including external resources will grow up. Uh, and then when you go to alpha, it might be reasonable to actually make a scale internally, but stop working with external resources temporarily to build alpha by its definition, which should be uh, a full game, which works completely for 100%. It might not contain the final content. It should not produce critical mistakes. It, it actually embodies all of the major features and all of the major gameplay. 
uh, and one whatever whoever external or internally you can go with from point A to point Z you know like completely finishing the game and basically get the experience out of it you know like but I really feel like uh, for content you know like which is an expensive position uh, which we'll talk about separately expensive but not really expensive you know like if you use placeholders and you work around it smartly uh, for, of how you structure that uh, linear production alpha stage seven. Uh, for, I also think that again nowadays it's uh, it's a perfect point to start building community, and uh, uh, that means that you would need to reorganize the work internally in your studio to again avoid a number of pitfalls associated with stuff that done internally and stuff that done externally. There is a number of elements that typically becomes an issue in every production like a necessity to produce material for community by the development team, uh, involvement of the development resources into external communication, if you want to build a community right, uh, reporting, uh, for stages reporting, if there is a publishing team. So effectively, uh, the problem with a lot of alpha productions is, you know, like it's your team stops to be completely internalized into the collective, which is like can be 100% attuned at only the development of the game. And one way or the another, you start to get people who do things externally and internally at the same time. And that's a two little bit different mindsets and trying to make them work together can be tricky. So let's talk about this as well. Uh, for, and that goes for organizational work. Again, I mean, like, and uh, for, uh, another thing, you know, like a lot of people probably been talking about that, you know, like, but I want to uh, talk about this again. Uh, every development of the game uh, is an iterative process, you know, like you cannot really uh, uh, not rehashing things up, you know, like why are you building it? Uh, for, because otherwise you're not doing things optimally again. And you really want to try to do it optimally, even given the fact that game is an extremely creative process, you know, like and a lot of the things would go out, right? You know, like so, uh, for, uh, like so. This, this is this is stage seven, stage eight, better. You know, like, and we would look, talk a lot about the content, uh, for integration, iterations of the content, the QA, uh, for then uh, all of the elements related to for uh, how the content can influence your processes. You know, like, and how editing the content would influence the performance. And why having an how why having previously vertical slice was super important to understand uh, the measurement of an impact of the final quality content to your performance and so on and so on and so on and uh, better better can be very tricky at the final stages uh, because you need to operate a lot of the content which would be more expensive and you want to be get more sure than anything else uh, while at the same time struggling with a lot of bugs which will inevitably appear in more quantity at every final stages of the development and how to build the processes you know like related to it right you know like it's it's something that we want to discuss separately as well of uh, before you'll cook your game into the early access or release or whatever which is a stage nine and uh, on the early access, uh, for, I really want to talk about the dichotomy of uh, production work and actual development work with everything related with release and actual communications of the schools of development and the community and, and marketing and how marketing works and what you're actually looking for and how you are supposed to build your work to get ready for the stage. Uh, I would like to talk about the algorithms of the platforms as well why it's essential to have your own website, why you need to work with a whole bunch of people from whom you will collect uh, your, their emails and, and, and talk to them in the form of newsletters about the different type of communications at the release and the post-release, including symmetric communication, asymmetric communication, uh, for type of the content you want to push out to make sure that your game is visible, you know, like you know, stuff like that. Uh, for promotion as well, you know, like, and uh, how, uh, specifically how you want to structure your work around the release and after, because like it actually deals with the human culture in general, you know, like, and a lot of people, they're making one of the same mistakes, they, they overburn the team right in before the release, then release happens, people are not capable to work properly, 
you know, like, and this is the point where you actually have to have most of your strengths, you know, like in motivation in the team, because like you would need to react a lot to the feedback of the community and show them that you care because without that, you know, like nothing really works. And like I said, you know, like the, the structure of this course, we're going to have two a week, right? You know, like, and uh, what we're going to do, we're going to like kick off the stream. I'll open the, the Excel tab and we'll just start writing things down and talk about stuff, you know, like, and uh, I hope the chat will provide some of the questions and I will try to attend to these questions and uh, also provide you actual practical examples from my experience working on the projects I've been working. And uh, I hope it will massively be massively useful for people because a lot of the things they kind of like they sound dependent but they're not you know like and uh, for, just to give you a couple of examples i mean like it's from questions i'm getting from indie developers who are asking me how to help to build the process of uh, which happens five six times because of the book probably and because of the communities being active five six times a week you know like on the email of uh, it's uh, essentially you know like it's uh, questions which would be related to uh, we've been working on the game and we've been building on the blueprint and we've been building with this content and this is a visual like third person or first person adventure and for some reason our performance is like 10 fps and you would go and look into the game and you would understand that almost every new assets being produced with an absolutely unique diffuse texture with a bunch of unique materials you know like and stuff and that really kills the performance and then blueprint, blueprints are not optimized as they shoot in the C++ when the game's out, you know, like, and a bunch of things which are typically uh, happens, right? Because of the things that a lot of documentation and the pipelines and industry knowledge are not telling people, you know, like people are just not informed about the small things which you can encounter only in production. And uh, they're not relate properly because let's be honest, you know, like a lot of those things, they're like boring things, right? You know, like, and I think that starting to attend again, boring things are important for quality and uh, reasonable budgeting and reasonable process related to the development, because otherwise we're just living in a world of some cartoonish optimism, you know, like what a lot of people who do not understand what production is, you know, like are telling you how things should happen and get extremely upset when they don't happen magically because like facts and because common sense, you know, like, and uh, what I really want to do, you know, like I want to provide you with the number of uh, intellectual tools and practices and methodologies that will help you to avoid a lot of mistakes and that will allow you to get through a lot of reality checks, you know, like with some of the materials and examples and knowledge I would like to share with the community. So uh, coming back to um, video, yeah, here is me, you know, like this is what we're going to do, you know, like and uh, uh, I'm literally just spontaneously recording this video, you know, like and uh, for, I hope that uh, for a lot of people will find it helpful. Uh, for, there's probably going to be a separate playlist, right? You know, like, and uh, for, uh, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's the that's the whole gig. Uh, not too many people today, uh, understandable. You know, like, uh, for, the stream was not announced, but uh, if you watch the video, you can uh, post your questions. And, uh, yeah, I guess like it's a part of the, my overall idea of using some of my retirement time to actually uh, do something useful for people who are trying to build good games and stuff and everything. Yeah. Um, any questions? Uh, I see it's not. There's a couple of people saying hello. Uh, of, uh, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, someone's asking me if, if when I will find new job. I mean, like, I, I don't think you understand the situation. Uh, I left myself, you know, like, and I'm not looking to any forms of employment. And in fact, uh, a lot of the things I'm doing and saying are, are largely making me unemployable into most of the corporate world because uh, being so vocal and not giving lots of shits and just saying things as they are and not looking to get into large collectives and not being very compatible uh, for, uh, with the ideology of the current industry 
uh, and uh, 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 in general corporate world I mean like it just I, I, I'm there is a very slight chance I would be ever working anywhere in my life again so I'm not sure I mean like I think that there's my, there might be a slight case, you know, like I would uh, need to produce some form of the business entities related to my plans to uh, book writing and comic publishing uh, for, and uh, for board game production initiatives, which are currently underway uh, or maybe to my consultancies, you know, like, but uh, I hope not, you know, like, so, uh, so I'm no, I mean, like, it's, it's not it's not really the case you know like where uh, there is a very large possibility i would be looking for any job anytime soon or working anywhere so yeah uh, uh about russian things you know about uh, making content content in russian you know like look i mean like i'll try to explain it this way right you know like i make i want to make it like a little bit more an international crowd i think it's massively useful for everyone to actually get their english to the better level you know like listening to what i'm saying i would still produce some of the russian content uh for, for the channel in a ratio of three to one probably but i would need to make a new setup i would need to go and restructure the channel uh, and i would need to make sure that it's usable for people who speak different languages you know like one way or another for uh, starting separating this my current plan is to make about 10-15 videos in English, you know, like where uh, it would make the channel feasible for people who speak English, you know, like and then I will be mixing content one way or another. Uh, f uh, so I, I hope it answers. I mean, like it's a, it's a English is a result of a very pra practical thinking. I mean, like it's and and my laziness as well, because uh, I've been asked I've been asked about a bunch of things related to my expertise by both uh, people who speak Russian and English. And I really want to use the channel and make it useful. And I don't want to do and record content twice. So that, go figure, you know, like that would be an answer to this question. Um, uh, uh, we're going to make Sunday reviews this year. Uh, we were going, yes, I mean, like, uh, for, this is a little bit of a setup for actually doing deconstruction of the games again. Uh, and uh, for, moreover, I'm currently talking to some of the people in the YouTube community, you know, like, and stuff, you know, like to do some of the initiatives together. Uh, and they would be related to, to uh, deconstruct and visibility and helping in the games in general. I mean, like, so we will do some of this under reviews. Uh, for, I need to make sure that this, this, uh, set of streams you know like and the set of uh for topics are covered you know like and after that i guess we will start to produce more things you know like in uh for uh, in more of a usual fashion for people who are like at this channel uh, uh so yeah I, I mean i hope you understand guys you know like it's that's that's the that's the idea of it you know like and uh this is something i'm trying to do to improve the channel uh, f uh, and to make sure, you know, like that uh, uh, stuff that I'm telling, you know, like is just uh, f uh, in general uh, uh, avail available for more people. I mean, like, so, yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, if nothing else, you know, like, so I guess we'll call it because, like, I didn't want the stream to be extremely long. And I really hope that uh, f uh, this course call it you know like would be uh useful for people so here you go uh have a good weekend uh, f uh i'm also recording uh a thing today with eugen sudak uh about the state of the industry and stuff at his telegram channel it's on the for uh for uh, his facebook i mean like if you have been following please join if not uh then not uh, i'm also planning to show up at a number of uh, different streams and uh, visiting some podcasts and they're like in in both in russian and english and i would uh post the copies you know like to the channel as well so if that helps as well well on that uh thank you very much have a good weekend and i'll be seeing you around cheers and bye